Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. It's almost the new year, so today I'm going to look back at my top 10 trips from the past 10 years. Since we're going into 2021, this is going to cover the trips I took from the start of 2011 up to the end of 2020. And I have to say, coming up with this list was way harder than I expected. I was incredibly fortunate this past decade, and I think I was lucky enough to go on around 30 or 40 trips, so there were lots of them to choose from. Plus, nearly every trip I went on was to a place I was excited to go see, so there really weren't many bad ones that I could easily cross off the list. Even when I narrowed it down to 10, trying to figure out what order to put them in was making my head spin. My ordering really came down to which ones gave me the most memorable experiences, or travel first for me, or the ones that I still talk about years later. But before I get into the top 10, there are a few honorable mentions that nearly made the list but didn't quite get there. The first honorable mention is my trip to Montreal, Canada in 2019. Montreal is such a great city. It has such a lively energy everywhere you go, and it's a perfect intersection of English Canada and French Canada, where you get to see and hear both languages all over the city. I had a great time, and I only wish I could have been there longer. Next up is my trip to Luxembourg City Luxembourg in 2019. It's a place that I don't often hear about, probably because I live in North America, but I thought it was such a great under the radar European city. I was completely hooked with Luxembourg City once I started walking around the old city and saw the fortress walls with tunnels built right into them. I'm a sucker for old, walled cities, so I thought this was great. Speaking of walled cities, next up is my trip to Quebec City, Canada in 2014. City walls are nearly unheard of in North America, so I had so much fun wandering around old Quebec City and climbing onto the walls. Plus, you're right in the heart of French Canada, so it's a great way to experience Quebecois culture. You're in an old, walled city where most of the people speak French, so it feels almost like you're in Europe without having to fly across an ocean. Next up is my trip to Marco Island, Florida in 2017. This trip was such an amazing, laid-back beach vacation. It's over on the Gulf of Mexico side of Florida, and not really near a major city, so it was really quiet and relaxed and laid back there. Plus, the island has a beautiful, long, sandy beach to spend the days, so it was the perfect place to get away from it all. The last honorable mention goes to the trip I took to Oslo and Trondheim, Norway in 2017. What I liked so much about this was that I got to have the bigger city experience in Oslo and then see the smaller city of Trondheim surrounded by all of its natural beauty. One memorable thing from this trip was that the time of year I was in Trondheim, the sun almost never sets. I was able to walk around the city center after midnight and it still wasn't pitch black out. So those are the honorable mentions. You're probably shaking your head at me since it's a top 10 list and I have 5 honorable mentions, but as I said before, I was lucky enough to go on so many amazing trips that I didn't want to leave any of them out. But now it's time for the main event, my top 10 trips of the past 10 years. At number 10 is a trip I took to the Isle of Barra, Scotland in 2011. This trip was a while ago, so I don't have any videos, but at least I have some nice pictures to show how great it was. Barra is a pretty off the beaten path place to visit, which is one of the things that made it so memorable. It's off the western coast of Scotland in the Outer Hebrides, and it took over 5 hours to get there by ferry. I loved how quiet and peaceful it was there. There are only around a thousand people living on the entire island. One of the things I really remember from the trip is the golf course. No one works there, it's based on the honor system, so you just put your money into a box when you want to play. But the really interesting thing was that the greens had electric fences around them to keep the cows from wandering onto them. I've never seen anything like that before. Out in the water near the main town, there's a little island that's completely covered with a castle. It makes for such a great visual, with the castle looking like it's rising out of the water. Barrow was such a great place, and it seemed a world away from the rest of Scotland. Coming in at number 9 is my trip to New York City in 2015. It's such an iconic, world-class city that pretty much every traveler wants to visit. 
So many American TV shows and movies are filmed there. So everywhere I went, I was seeing landmarks and neighborhoods that I recognized. Getting to see the Statue of Liberty was such an amazing experience for me. Plus, I got to go inside of it and climb all the way up to the crown, giving me a once-in-a-lifetime view out over Liberty Island. I love big, loud, chaotic cities, so getting to wander the streets of New York was so much fun for me. There's always so much to see and do and experience there. It's a type of city you have to see at least once in your life. At number 8 is my trip to Guimarães, Portugal in 2014. This was my first visit to Portugal, and instead of going to one of the bigger, more famous cities, I decided to take a trip to somewhere a little smaller and not quite as well known. And looking back at it, that was a great decision. I really couldn't believe how much great stuff was packed into such a small city. There were things to see around pretty much every corner, and it had a nicer, slower pace compared to bigger European cities. Within walking distance of the city center, there was a cable car that I was able to take up to Peña Mountain. It had little hiking paths around the mountaintop, with churches and shrines and all sorts of other things to see up there. Guimarães is another example of a place that most Americans have never heard of, but that's a really nice spot to visit. My number 7 trip was when I went to Stockholm, Sweden in 2018. Probably my favorite thing about Stockholm is its layout. It's an archipelago, so the city's made up of a bunch of connected islands. That made for some really distinct neighborhoods that are literally separated by bridges. Old Town Stockholm was on its own island. I can't remember ever seeing anything like that before. It really makes you feel like you're walking through time as you cross the bridge from the newer city to Old Town. And the whole city just had a lively and fun energy. No matter where I went, there always seemed to be people out enjoying life and having a good time. At number 6 is my trip to Las Vegas in 2019. Some of my other favorite trips have been quiet and peaceful, but Vegas was the exact opposite. I love how loud and bright and chaotic and over the top everything is in Vegas. Even though I'm not really much of a gambler, and I'm not really much of a nightlife guy, there was just so much to see and do here. Every one of the huge casino resorts along the Vegas Strip that I went into was like its own little city, with flashy themes and around-the-clock action. And I spent some time in downtown Vegas along Fremont Street, which seemed to have an even more wild party atmosphere than the Strip, if that's even possible. Plus, I got to do a day trip out to Grand Canyon West to see an absolutely incredible natural wonder. When you're along the Strip, you forget you're in a desert, but getting to go out to the Grand Canyon was an incredible chance to see what that part of the United States is like. My trip to Vegas seemed to fly by so quickly, but I had an amazing time there. Coming in at number 5 is my trip to Southern Germany in 2015. I've been to Germany a few times, and every time I'm there I love it. Frankfurt was a nice place to start this vacation, but it was all of the smaller cities and little side trips that really made this memorable. I got to sail along the Rhine River and see some charming riverfront towns, visit an old hilltop castle, and get my first real exposure to small town Germany. After that, I made my way down the touristy romantic road, where I stopped in even more small, historic German cities, visited a beautiful church, and spent some time driving through some amazing countryside. Plus, I got to see some of the most beautiful storybook castles that I've ever seen. It was like they were right out of a movie. And to finish the trip off, I got to experience Oktoberfest in Munich, and it was every bit as wild and incredible as I expected. I got to pack so much into this trip, and it really opened my eyes to what southern Germany has to offer. At number 4 is my trip to the Riviera Maya, Mexico in 2020. I'll admit, before I went, the idea of an all-inclusive resort really wasn't something I thought I would like. But I was completely wrong, I absolutely loved it. The Mayan Riviera is such a beautiful spot, and my hotel had over a kilometer of sandy beach with clear blue water. I even got to see some sea turtles while I was snorkeling at the resort. Most of my time was spent relaxing at the resort, but I was only 30 minutes from Playa del Carmen, so I got to spend some time in a lively Mexican city and eat some incredible local food. Another highlight of this trip was seeing Chichen Itza, one of the modern wonders of the world. This part of Mexico has some amazing Mayan ruins, and seeing Chichen Itza in person was even more impressive than I expected. 
Plus, nearly everywhere in the Yucatan Peninsula there are these natural swimming areas called cenotes. I got to swim at three of them on this trip, and I was blown away by how they were all so different from each other, giving me completely different experiences. This trip really made me realize that I need to spend more time exploring Mexico. Coming in at number three is my trip to Ireland in 2014. There's something about Ireland that I just love. I started out in Dublin wandering the busy streets, exploring the neighborhoods, and experiencing the big city energy. But I think my favorite part was when I started driving through all of the smaller cities and towns and really seeing the Irish countryside. The country itself is so beautiful with all of the shades of green everywhere you look, and it seemed like every city I stopped in was full of Irish charm and hospitality. What I really fell in love with was the amazing coastline in Western Ireland. Driving around there, it really felt like I was at the end of the world with the jagged, rocky coast falling off into the ocean waves down below. This trip let me travel from one side of Ireland to the other, experience both the big cities and smaller towns, see the famous tourist traps and off the beaten path stops, and see some of the country's incredible natural beauty. At number two is my trip to Melbourne, Australia in 2017. I had been wanting to visit Australia for so long, I can't even describe how excited I was to finally be able to go there. Everything I had heard about Melbourne made it sound like such a great spot, and it didn't let me down at all. The city itself was so much fun to explore. There were these little alleyways all over the central business district that gave it such a lively energy. Some had shops and restaurants and cafes in them, but then others were just filled with street art plastered over every wall. But one of the things I loved most about Melbourne was how close it is to some incredible nature. The first day trip I took was down the Great Ocean Road, where I got to see some unbelievable coastal views and rock formations. And the second one was to Phillips Island, where I got to see kangaroos and koalas and black swans and hundreds of penguins returning home from the ocean at night. I only got to scratch the surface of what Australia has to see and do, but I definitely want to come back. And finally, my top vacation from the past 10 years. Coming in at number one was my trip to Buenos Aires, Argentina in 2015. This trip was another first for me. Not only my first time in Argentina, but also my first time in South America. I thought it was such an amazing and energetic city. It's huge, and every neighborhood I visited seemed to have its own distinct look and feeling and vibe. One thing I'll never forget is that on every block in the tourist areas, there would be these black market money changers trying to get tourists to exchange their money for pesos, since it was really hard for locals to get foreign currency. While I was there, I got to go to El Monumental Stadium to watch a soccer match. That's where River Plate plays, one of the most famous teams in all of Argentina, and it was an unforgettable experience. The passion of the fans with their cheering and chanting and singing was something I'll never forget. I also did a day trip out to Tigre where I went on a boat tour of the Piranha River Delta. This was such a cool experience, going through a maze of tiny little waterways that cut through the area, and for most of the trip there weren't any other boats in sight. And then other parts were little towns where the water acted like roads to get around. Check this part out. We went out into the more open waters of Rio de la Plata and stopped the boat a few hundred meters from the nearest shore area. But there was a sandbar underneath, so I was able to hop out of the boat and stand in the middle of the water, nowhere near the shore. Start to finish, I just had such an amazing time in Buenos Aires, and that's why I thought it was my best trip of the past 10 years. So that's it for the top 10 trips I've taken in the past 10 years. It was so great to get to look back on all of these unforgettable memories and relive some of these amazing times. But it wasn't until I made a list of where I'd been in the past 10 years that I really realized what parts of the world I've been missing. I finally got to go on my first trips to South America and Australia, but otherwise my trips were completely in Europe and North America. I'm a little bit, I don't know the right word, let down, disappointed, embarrassed by that. It's been over 10 years since my last trips to Africa or Eastern Europe, which were both places I've had amazing trips to in the past. And I've still never been to visit Asia or the Middle East, which both have so many great places to visit. 
And it's not because I don't want to. All of these places are incredibly high on my list of dream vacations. It's just that living in the USA, trips to North America and Western Europe are just so much cheaper and quicker and easier. But hopefully I'll be able to start checking some other amazing spots off my travel list pretty soon. Hopefully you enjoyed watching along with this top 10 list. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. While you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm Firsthand Globe Trotting. On Twitter, I'm Firsthand Globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some first-hand globetrotting of your own.